that is overwhelming. Is anybody against?
make sure all the executive are happy with appointments. In future, this um, proposal will be to have the majority of the executive. Um, one of the um, opposition members um, after the meeting did say that she would prefer if these, uh, these appointments were all taken to full council, and I've suggested to her that she brings that up in a future uh, constitution review working party so we can discuss it and come to the appropriate conclusion of that. But at the moment, this is what the, met, the, the proposal is, and the actual point of um, appointment hasn't changed. Um, in item four, we're tidying up some job titles and um, aligning the approvals between SIL and 106. And uh, in the procurement guidelines, we're allowing existing frameworks and we're adding a standstill period as recommended in OUJ. Thank you very much, Pauline. We do have a second. Now or, or I'll speak now. In fact, uh, yeah. the only thing I want to add is to say that uh, Section 4 has gone through personnel board and the members are agreed with it. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Approved by unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I just really wanted to say that uh, on the most part I agree with what happened in, in the uh, Constitution Review uh, Working Group, but I did have, as Pauline says, one concern, which is that the interim um, the chief exec would be an um, uh, by majority of the executive rather than the full council, which it would be as a, a non-interim. Thank you very much. And of course, the all approved Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's just a brief comment. It's on the first of the recommendations, which is the one about taking all the one item of business and the extraordinary council meeting. If there needs to be an extra council meeting, which it certainly has been the case in January every year for the past few years, why not just schedule an additional ordinary meeting of the council? Then you could have as many items of business as you liked. If Conservative members would stop voting against having a January meeting, we wouldn't have to have a winning constitutional amendment like this to get around a problem that's entirely of their own creation. I am fully confident that the next time we look at the annual schedule of meetings, the Lib Dems will be proposing adding a January meeting, and I look forward to the Conservatives telling us yet again that it's unnecessary, despite the evidence of this constitutional amendment that it is. Okay, back to the proposal, which is Pauline or Johnson. I would just like to move the motion, please. Move the motion. Okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> Those in favour of the motion and in the agenda. <coughs> and those against. That's carried. Okay, we now come to the uh, item of the statement by the leader. Excuse <coughs> me, the executive members and deputy executive members will have 20 minutes for the whole session. So be any practice brevity on this, as I always do. <coughs> right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In the style of brevity, um, under Rule 5.4.16 of the Constitution, I'd like to inform the Council that an urgent decision was made at the Executive on the 20... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> on the Executive on the 26th of October to introduce temporary free park, car parking in Wokingham Town Centre, Town Council car parks from 3pm in order to help mitigate some of the issues raised around marketplace refurbishments and other regeneration works in and around the town. This measure has been taken to assist businesses during the most important trading period of the year, from November to the end of January. Local businesses have also produced a number of promotional videos to share, so please find out more about these and share them with your friends and family. This week was the closing date for the submissions for applications for the new chief executive for this authority. I'm pleased to advise that there has been a significant level of interest and there will be a full selection day in early January with the proposed candidate being put forward to full council's approval on the 19th of January. There is an opportunity for a cross-section of councillors to participate in a facilitated session with the shortlisted candidates. We're seeking expressions of interest for those who would like to participate in the member panel in January in order to receive an email about this. 
The Chairman of the Personnel Board and I have been working hard to ensure that the process is in place for the Chief Executive of Recruitment are transparent, objective and aligned with the Constitution in order to identify and secure the very best candidate for our authorities' futures ambitions. When I was elected leader of the Council, I made a commitment to make representations to the government on the big issues that are affecting working borough council. I highlighted two in particular, housing and financing. Uh, last week, Councillor Lee and I met with Sajid Javid, the Secretary of State for Communities and Local Government, to raise our concerns around these issues. On housing in particular, we were offered the opportunity to put forward proposals for schemes that could be piloted in Wokingham to help address some of these issues. We especially raised our concerns about land banking, that even though this council has more than 10,500 grant commissions, developers are only building around 1,000 houses per year. As a result, the planning inspectors tell us that we're not building houses fast enough. Part of me. We told the Secretary of State that this was unacceptable and needed to change. So yesterday I was pleased to see that the Chancellor directly addressed this issue in his budget speech, speech with an urgent review promise to look at the gap, which is due to report in 2018. Other parties moan and gripe, but the Conservatives deliver. <laughs> this, is the first, this is the last Council meeting before the Christmas break. So I just wanted to thank our very many staff and this authority and companies who have worked incredibly hard this year and will continue to do so over the Christmas period to provide the services that our residents really need. I also want to convey our continuing gratitude to our volunteers in our community who will be taking time away from their families over the festive period for no gain to themselves whatsoever. And they'll be working tirelessly across society, including with some of our most vulnerable. Our community is built on these people they are the foundation stones of our very borough. On behalf of our councillors, I want to sincerely thank all of those people for everything that they do to make working borough a great place to live. Thank you very much. I think we have Councillor Monroe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. But in the interest of brevity, I'd just like to say two things, really. Uh, one, good news item. The Thames Valley Science Park Gateway building is now open for business with 20 businesses if they're included the building. Um, there are lots and lots of people working there. Great milestone for the borough. And also to say that uh, another hotel is going to be built in Wimash by uh, Whitbread, the uh, parent company of Premier Inn, which will be another 76 jobs. Good news for the borough. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you and good evening, Mr. Mayor. A couple of quick announcements. Firstly, hot off the press, as of late this afternoon, um, I'm pleased to confirm that the Hogwood or Merino site, as it's known in Finchford, which is an integral part of the Arborfield SDL, which has been pretty well dormant since planning permission for 1,500 houses was granted two years ago, has been sold to Legal and General Homes, and uh, I'm very confident that that will soon start contributing towards our housing numbers, which I'm sure will help towards our five-year land supply. This has been a long-running saga, but uh, the deal was actually struck this afternoon. Uh, the second point I wanted to mention, of course, is that in, in the absence of David Lee, who handles strategic planning matters, we've been having a whole series of meetings during the month of November with all the towns and parishes to discuss all the sites that were submitted in each of those towns and parishes for the uh, current local plan update process. Uh, we have had the majority of those meetings, uh, and there are just three more to go tomorrow and I think very early part of the next week. I'm pleased to report the towns and parishes have participated well, and obviously there have been representatives not only from the borough, but from the parishes and towns present in those meetings. And I think they have broadly agreed with our initial assessments that have taken place. Uh, third point is really to echo what Charlotte has already said as leader, is that we've been continuing to lobby some of the inequity that we're currently being uh, faced with in the planning system, particularly the fact that it is being exploited by opportunist developers. And as well as the meeting that uh, David and Charlotte had with Sajid Javid, um, David and I had a meeting with Alok Sharma, the Housing and Planning Minister, <coughs> and uh, just two weeks ago, David and I had a meeting with Theresa May here, uh, when we again put these points across very strongly. So again, echoing what has already been said, I was particularly pleased to hear that the Chancellor in his budget statement appears to have long last got the message from a variety of different sources and is promising to look into this as an urgent matter, which I'm very thrilled about. 
finally, uh, 7 p.m. next Wednesday, there's a training session here for all members, and we've also invited town and parish members of my assistants, uh, that they should come along as well and understand the whole process of traffic modelling, which for those of you who have any exposure to it, may initially appear to be a black art, but I think historically possibly was. But now looking at the current way to go about doing it, I penny dropped when I had a briefing a couple of months ago, and I would encourage you to all come along and get some confidence that the traffic modelling we're doing looking ahead is pretty precise. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Councillor Chris Bowley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Last year, the Council was able to offer free parking on the three Saturdays before Christmas in our town centre council owned car parks. This year, I'm pleased to say I can go further and extend free parking to include Sunday as well, giving free parking for the entire three weekends. Furthermore, with parking free after three already adopted in Woking Town, that means that parking there will be free from 3 p.m. on Friday to 8 a.m. on the following Monday. I hope that this will be welcomed by Woking Town retailers who are currently experiencing reduced footfall due to the town centre improvement works. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, I'm about to be sort of a scratch of that, so please do. It's the end thing to do. Um, Mark Ashworth. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, firstly, I'd like to inform you and Council of an outbreak of diarrhoea and vomiting illness at Ogden Primary School in Lower Early. Why do you have to tell me? <laughs> this is suspected but not confirmed as being caused by norovirus. Um, school management formally reported the outbreak and sought advice from Public Health England who managed the incident and a letter has been sent from the school to all parents as befits best practice. <coughs> On Tuesday of this week, Mr O'Shea, the head teacher at Hawkden, in conjunction with his governors, decided to close the school for 48 hours and has reopened today, Thursday. This enabled a full deep clean of the premises and I can inform you that the school has managed the outbreak exceedingly well. The school did everything according to good practice and should be commended for their actions and for keeping a really positive face throughout. Um, information has also been sent to all other schools in the borough regarding preventative actions. Thank you. As a quick update on children's services, my mission to visit every school in the borough is going really well. I've asked for two hot topics at every school I've visited to enable me to connect and keep the conversation going. Unsurprisingly, a common theme is funding. Money is short and with a view to always spending for teaching, other parts of our school's priorities are potentially suffering. I've been able to reassure them that this borough council is pushing for fairer national funding and has a capital program of repair and renewal that we will not shy away from. In children's care and early help, we've launched our Signs of Safety initiative, um, innovation program for our social workers. Last week I chose to witness this first hand by attending their two day Signs of Safety course. They're impressive people and very dedicated people and I'll be looking to showcase this trailblazing approach for you all early in the new year. That's it for me, Your Worship. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mark. I have to say, Hope is a school I, I know particularly well and I do wish them well. I think that's a pretty serious situation. Yes, they, thank you. Appear to have handled it very well. Absolutely. I would expect no less of them, but I think if you would actually um, deliver on my behalf, best wishes and congratulations for what they're doing because that's a pretty nasty, serious situation. Of course, we do uh, I, I will uh, I will pass it to you, John. Thank you. No one more. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> three items just to bring to your attention. Our E3 has launched a scheme to encourage engagement by schools and voluntary bodies to promote further recycling of glass. We wish to capture in our recycling bring backs more of the glass that's currently put out with the general waste. If successful, this could push up our recycling rate by around 
thus also decreasing the cost to us of waste disposal. We have developed a partnership with Buckingham County Council to tap into their expertise in clamping down on fly tipping. Since this relationship was formed, this council has secured two prosecutions and one simple caution. Fly tipping is an antisocial behaviour and blights our environment. Hence, where evidence of perpetrators exists, we will take action. Thirdly, you'll see from the agenda for the executive meeting next week, there are three papers relating to sport and leisure. They cover, firstly, leisure management contract, secondly, Bowler's new build, and thirdly, Embroke School 3G pitch. I'm pleased to be bringing these to the executive, as they will, if approved, result in a major boost to our already excellent facilities for the enjoyment and well-being of residents. Investment is planned in all six leisure centres with new builds at Bullmarsh and Carnival Pool. New and improved sport pitches and courts have been created already in Early, Irish Street, Arborfield and Warfield, and another is proposed at Denbrook School. We also expect to make a profit from the operation of these facilities. <coughs> Contrast this to Reading, where the council seems to have lost the plot on managing their finances and is planning to close facilities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we should now move on to move on to state councilman companies. Are there anybody who wishes to speak? We have Gary Cowan, Ernest Alty, Charles Marquez. David Chopin and Stuart. <coughs> so, I think it starts with. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at a high level, the housing group has now become well established, and I'm sure some of my colleagues will be talking about some of that detail. But one thing I would like to say, if I'm not stealing Alistair's thunder here, uh, is that uh, our MD that runs our housing group has been recognised as one of the top successful MDs in the local government housing sector. Uh, and I think that's fantastic that we've actually been recognised for that. Yeah, yeah. This year we are handing over 125 new homes in the financial year to a sister housing company, which I'm sure my colleagues will expand upon, uh, generating a profit of £1.1 million. And in, in 1819, WHO will hand over a further 60 new homes and a profit just short of £1 million. Pounds. So it's a great result if we're really getting there. Working Housing has seven projects under development and nine sites in the pipeline. And these developments provide future income in line with their proof. These include six units of two bedroom houses and affordable rent securities, which will provide a gross annual income of 58,000. A facility for care leaves at Reading Road providing a gross annual income of over 50,000. And 34 self contained living apartments with on site care provided by to this, with an annual income of over 212,000 pounds. Two two-bedroom maisonettes for shared ownership with a sales value of over two hundred thousand pounds, and rental income of over five thousand pounds per annum, as well as an official opening for Phoenix Avenue in November and Mrs. Fifth Road Stage. Thank you, Mr. Beck. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Munro. I think it's the turn of Councillor Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll try to keep this brief. Though, should members like more information, please do feel free to uh, contact me. I'll be happy to answer any questions or provide any detail that you may have. Uh, so just to run through a few uh, quick points. At present, WHL has 84 homes under construction over nine sites. To date, we have passed over for management to Lodden and Berrybrook Homes, 68 homes. And there are approximately 130 um, homes in the development pipeline. Uh, the documented delays at Phoenix Avenue are almost behind us as almost all homes have now been handed over. Uh, one positive point is that due to delays we've been able to um, implement the liquidated and ascertained damages and that will actually ensure that we bring this project in under budget. Um, Foster's extra care scheme continues to progress and is to budget and that will be handed over in early January. Uh, our other schemes are making good progress and I'm sure many members will have seen 52 Reading Road as that will, uh, as it nears completion and should be completed by February, provided much needed housing there. Uh, we have a number of potential sites that we are working on, many in conjunction with uh, Richard as Commissioner, um, and um, that includes the first phase of Course Ride, which will uh, be a good challenge for WHL to sink its teeth into. 
Um, I would just add in closing two quick points. Um, there will be an official opening event for Phoenix Avenue uh, that um, will be held in the new year. And of course, all members are welcome to attend. And if you'd like more information on that, please do let me know. I'll be happy to share that with you. And finally, as, as mentioned by Stuart, um, none of this really would be possible without the excellent work of the staff that we have <coughs> within our housing companies. So my thank you to <coughs> Bill, to Rachel, to Darren, to Molly, and to Carol for that. Tonight I want to concentrate on London Homes and the current key work of focusing on ensuring the management of care arrangements at Foster's is designed for independent living while extra care is in place for its opening in January. Uh, the new scheme for older people replaces the former Foster's Care Home and Foster's Lane Woodley and is fast approaching completion. Walking Borough Council's housing company, Walking Housing Limited, is building the scheme for its sister company, Lawton Holmes, and care will be provided by the council's social care company, Archives. When complete, the scheme will consist of 34 self-contained apartments, all with private balconies or ground floor terraces, and it will have a communal facility for residents, including two lounges, a kitchen, and a dining room. The apartments will allow for all the people to live independently in security and privacy of the wrong home with additional support and care staff available if, if needed. This is a scheme that all of us can be proud of in delivering, and my thanks go out to very many people who have made this happen. Thank you. Charles Marquette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Chairman's statement on behalf of Councillor Pollock, who I'm Optalis. Uh, the teams in Optalis from Wokingham and the Royal Borough are working closely together with staff from both areas to share experience, <coughs> increase knowledge and develop improved working practices to improve the quality of services currently offered to the residents of both boroughs. We have combined and enhanced the quality assurance teams inherited to make better use of the professional practice skills and experience of the staff uh, so we can provide better and faster quality assurance to practitioners. The finance and HR support systems from both councils are being brought together to strengthen the company's financial information systems, budgeting, cost control, management decision making, and to support the HR needs of a large number of frontline staff. Optalis is performing in line with budget and this is expected to continue to the end of the financial year. Uh, Councillor Pollock wanted me to specifically mention our supported employment service manager, Donna Morgans who has received the highly commended award in the Workplace Mental Health Awards category at Thames Valley Business Awards. This award reflects the importance of Tarlis places on mental health and proactively creating a healthy, productive and transparent culture. Furthermore, we try to share our good practice with local employers, assisting them with awareness training support and reasonable adjustments to become increasingly inclusive. We work across the community with partners including all adult care, social care services, the community mental health team and transition teams. We have a prominent voice through the community, actively contributing to board various local boards such as the Special Education Needs and Disabilities Implement Implementation Group Carers Strategic Group, the Substance Misuse and Domestic Abuse Strategic Group and the Thames Valley Partnership for Reducing Reoffending through Supported Employment. A key element of Optalis' service is the work we do with local carers to provide support for young people struggling in mainstream schools. Whether it's volunteering, work experience or paid opportunities, Optalis now supports up to 300 people at any one time to help them enter the world of work. This award is testament to the excellent work done by Optalis in providing a sustainable long-term benefit to our customers, colleagues and the wider community. And in conclusion, Optalis continues to meet all the objectives set by the council. Um, last but not least, please, Mr. Councillor Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, most of all, I wanted to say, as already been said, so I will just <coughs> add a couple of bits of interesting information. But at 11 o'clock, Mr. Duccio handed over in Phoenix uh, this month 
But the remaining five properties, which are due, were due to be ready the week before Christmas, the handover will not now take place until the new year, as we will not move tenants in that close to Christmas. Uh, those properties will remain the responsibility of Hill until the new year. However, the handovers of four units at Groveland's and another four at Anderson Hall will take place just before Christmas because they, uh, there are identified people who need them. Uh, Berrybrook Homes website is now live and work is ongoing with developing our, our uh, suite of policies and the business plan. Uh, for your information, the draft business plan financial position looks positive and shows Berrybrook should have a strong future meeting, in meeting our key objectives of providing affordable homes and an ongoing income stream for WBC. We are estimating the company will be profitable in 2021 uh, having effectively broken even uh, in 1920. Thank you very much. We now move to item 58, member question time. Now this is a 20 minute slot. Um, there are a lot of questions. I can't believe we'll get through them all. Um, supplementaries are, are allowed if necessary. Um, but please, again, just make it a slick question. Not a statement. Uh, and perhaps the uh, last one question will also practice our new word tonight, brevity. Call upon Gary Cowan to ask his question. Of all we'd leave here. I'd like to ask the question of standing for the day. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Good evening, Councillor Cowan. As you may have noticed, I'm not Councillor David Lee. So I'm an I have an answer that he prepared earlier. Uh, the Council must follow the clear process and requirements set out in legislation and government policy when updating our local plan. This includes assessing all sites promoted through the process uh, and consulting on potential approaches towards managing development. Over 260 sites have been promoted into the plan process by landowners and others. In a few instances, individual sites or clusters of sites are extremely large or complex. To ensure that analysis captures holistic impacts and opportunities, including the correct infrastructure, should any site be deemed suitable, a master planning approach has been chosen. Members were updated on this through the related report to the Executive in July 17, which you referred to in your question. Undertaking detailed work now provides residents and others with the opportunity to engage in influence assessments early in the local plan process, allowing us to address a number of lessons learned through our successful core strategy. Master planning is simply a sensible way to approach large and complex sites. The relevant board members and parish councils will be fully engaged in the process as it moves forward. There will also be an opportunity for residents to comment on the outcomes of that process. In addition, the work, the work under, currently being undertaken on the master planning for the three large summer sites promoted. We will have met with all of the town and parish borough board members during November to discuss all 260 sites submitted. In addition, I have met with seven town and parish councils and requested a meeting with all the others to explain them in detail the process we are going through to update our local planning. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank, thank you for that, Simon. As you might have expected, I emailed the Prime Minister, Philip Hammond, the Chancellor, Alok Sharma, the Minister of State for Housing and Science, Sajid Sanj Javid, the Secretary of State for the Northern Government, and Oli Sanji, another courtesy to reply. Um, needless to say, the file was, the file was not encouraging. Uh, what I find interesting is that the executive members of this council had meetings with Alan Sharma, Sajid Javid, and finally some of you met the Prime Minister recently. It would be interesting in the cause of openness and transparency if you could make a public statement to their soul and all how the outcomes of these meetings turn out when to the I'm sure my colleague David would be very happy to do that. Once we have the responses from all the ministers and so Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Hawksill. I've got to avoid this uh, microphone. Yeah. 
Mr. Mayor, I'd like to apologize to you. I withdraw my question 58.2. The Licensing and Appeals Committee on, met on Monday, the 21st of November, last Monday, and agreed to progress to a formal consultation in respect of the adopt ad adoption of a community of impact policy for the parish of Bremen. The adoption of a community of impact policy would permit the licensing authority to consider other relevant existing licensable activities when considering application. Currently, without the policy, this is not permissible. On behalf of the parish, I would like to thank Barry Patton, the chairman and the members of the licensing committee and appeals committee for addressing the principal licensing officer and normally on the yours and the executive member. Thank you. I'm seeing that's the question we draw, John. Okay. Uh, I just saw a question, so I'll read it. With regard to the 22 Peach Place flats, where, <coughs> where WBC will be using public funds, namely Section 106 Community Sums, to pay for these flats, when will these when will these costs be in the public domain? Thank you, Councillor Ferris, for your question. Uh, the project cost for the Peach Place key work homes is not currently in the public domain, as it is commercially sensitive. These costs will be publicly available after the completion of the contracts to the council and the housing company, most likely in the spring or summer of next year. Details on the council's expenditure on capital projects, including affordable housing, are routinely published in the capital programme, which is signed off in February each year. Very well. Another supplementary? I ask a question standing in my name. Thank you for your question, Councillor Smith. The planning guidance is set out in the Council supplementary planning documents. And this includes the local planning enforcement plan. It sets out how the Council deals with breaches of planning control. Over the last two or three years, the Council has taken an increasingly robust approach to planning enforcement against planning breaches that have a significant impact on the quality of the borough and its residents. And 70 enforcement notices have been served by the Council since 2015. Although the Council is committed to ensuring that development in the borough is of the highest quality, it must take a proportionate approach to the action it employs to enforce breaches of planning control. In fact, about half of all contacts with planning enforcement, it actually transpires that the issues of concern do not require planning permission. Our focus is on seeking a negotiated approach to resolve breaches where possible, given that this is a more successful and cost-effective than resorting to formal action in the first instance. However, should a negotiated solution not be achieved, and where unauthorised development is contrary to guidance and harmful, robust and decisive action is taken? No, I do not. Uh, may I ask a question standing in my name? Uh, thank you, Councillor Swaddle. Um, to be honest, the answer not really. Um, I had hoped that more affordable homes would have been seen as a good news. Um, but having said that, I'm pleased the scrutiny panel uh, took the decision that they did because it's clearly in the public interest that we build more affordable homes. No, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Swaddle. Uh, I, I do, it's point of order 40, 30, 30. Um, I call it, it's not about outcomes or process, it's actually about process. And the Open Bridge Speaking Committee made recommendations, recommendation three, changes the process from now on. Um, and that was the point of the call in, it wasn't a question of approval housing. Okay. Thanks, Angus Thank you. I'll ask the question in my name. Thank you, Angus. Um, Single Last Berkshire was launched in 2011 under the government's broadband delivery UK programme to roll out high speed service to areas not covered by commercial plans or private sector providers. Over the past five years, the programme has driven up superfast broadband capacity across Berkshire from 87 to 95 percent in two phases. The good news is that the third and final phase is now underway after contracts were awarded to BT and Gigaclear in July. 
in working and the coverage will reach 99.53% by the end of the third phase of the project next in 2019. As part of the project, discussions will be on the PT, Gear Declare and other providers under their commercial plans to achieve the final target of 100%. The Superfast project team will be able to provide more information on rollout plans in each area by the end of this calendar year. Once this information is available, the communication exercise will be completed to interested residents by parish and town of Canterbury. Thank you. Supplementary, do you have any? I, I do, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, and I note also that the recent uh, announcement that. Um, the providers will be asked to be a little more upfront about how many people will benefit uh, from broadband from, from facilities. Um, but clearly, uh, your, your comment will not cover 100%. Uh, and I just wonder whether you would expect uh, an impact uh, from further introduction for mobile networks, especially with 5G. Yes, I think it's absolutely right, and uh, you, you're quite right, it's quite hard to, to get to that, line, that last piece uh, for 100%. Uh, undoubtedly, 5G will have an impact, and I think the good news is for everybody that it will enable competition, and I think will provide some, some pressure to the, to the prices that may be charged for high speeds. Councillor Ferguson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll ask the question standing in my name. Just to Councillor Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Civil parking enforcement. <coughs> Thank you, Michael, for your question. Um, civil parking enforcement started on the street on the 2nd of October. Initially, only warnings rather than fines were issued. Between the 2nd and 12th of October, approximately 1,000 warnings were served. Since the penalty notice with fines started on the 30th of October, 950 have been issued. That's obviously the point where, this, where I had the advice from the officers gone up since then, of course. Now, no issues from the public have been raised with working by council in respect mm -hmm. to the tickets issued. There have been a small number of issues raised about visitor permits, which, which need addressing, about the new permit scheme generally, and the websites which the council team is addressing. A few complaints during the early stages of implementation were made to NSL, the parking company who administers CPE, about the responsiveness of their customer services team. This has been addressed and there has been significant improvement. Generally, the process of introducing CP has gone very smoothly. Thank you very much. Well, some of that be, uh, um, not in view of that, but I think the council would like to have updates on how it goes on. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Bill Sam is not here, so we get a good answer. Uh, we'll go for all in your Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the 19 AC bus services in Woodley and Early have been reduced by Reading Bus on the grounds that these services are supposedly loss making. Could the executive member confirm that Working Borough Council increased its funding for the subsidised part of these services, yet Reading Bus has still reduced the parts of the bus services that actually made money in a commercial one that we're not allowed to subsidise? Thank you very much. And that is uh, again for uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your question. The 19 A Strike C bus services in Woodley and Early have been reduced by Reading buses due to the service's financial viability. The reduction of the service was a result of splitting out the commercial part of the bus service and retaining it and leaving the non commercial viable parts of the route to be supported by Woking Borough Council. Additional funding was provided to Reading buses by Woking Borough Council under the contract for an interim period so that the remaining part of the supported service which is now Route 12, would be able to meet the requirements of its users. To the best of our knowledge, Reading buses have not reduced the retail, the retail commercial parts of the bus service that were financially viable to them. Uh, just, just to say, this, the service was withdrawn because the contract was I'll shorten the question very simply. Why wasn't a temporary crossing uh, actually installed when the pavement was closed rather than waiting several weeks before it happened? Yeah. <coughs> 
Thank you, Rochelle, for your question. Uh, as these works have been delivered by third party, the council's role is to review and ensure compliance. I can confirm that suitable facilities are now in place to manage pedestrians more effectively as work progresses. There was some procedural errors on the part of the developer which the council did not action swiftly enough, and I apologise for this. Action, as you've indicated, has now been taken to require pedestrian management plans with submissions and that licenses to work on the highway are withheld until these are agreed to the council. Thank you very much. Do you have a supplementary? Really short. We guarantee this will not happen again. <laughs> I don't think it's very wise to guarantee anything, so we do our best efforts to minimise the possibility. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I wonder, before I answer the question, could I be told by Councillor Lee is not here? I hope he hasn't chosen to attend the social event of the Conservative Party rather than take part in the affairs of this council where he's deputy leader. Uh, that's not a question to me. Uh, Can I ask the question standing in my name? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Uh, under government planning policy, local authorities are expected to enable the building of enough homes to meet the assessed housing need. The government recently consulted on a standard methodology for assessing this need, which, if confirmed, would require 876 homes a year to be built by the borough from 2016. We have already planned for and granted planning permission for a large proportion of these new homes through our successful core strategy, which, as you know, runs to 2026. The local plan review will consider how the homes required over a longer period through to 2036 can best be delivered. Through the LPU, we will ensure that new development is planned and sustainable. This includes consideration of impacts on roads and other infrastructure. When development on a site is shown to be unsustainable, these sites will be not taken forward. Our successful adopted core strategy focuses the majority of development in the four strategic locations. This approach has enabled significant new infrastructure to be delivered alongside new development to mitigate the impacts and to try and alleviate pressures on other areas. Engagement with the LPU with residents to date has shown support for the continuation of this approach. Where local authorities are delivering an agreed plan, there should be every expectation that development outside those planned areas should be rejected, as our adopted core strategy has largely enabled us to manage where development occurs. Recently, we have experienced some difficulty with the way current government planning policy, policy established under the Coalition Government in 2010 is being interpreted by the planning inspector. This has increased the risk that developments in unsuitable and unsustainable locations may be allowed on appeal due to the precise determination of current five-year land supply. This is a real concern. Planning inspectors are assessing some appeals on applications we have refused on sites put forward outside of planned and agreed areas purely on a five-year land supply basis and not on our current plan nor with consideration for the significant number of permissions granted but not yet built by developers, which totals approximately 10,000. We are actively engaging with government at every level, including the Prime Minister, to highlight the failures of the current system. We welcome and appreciate the support offered by other political parties and from our parish and town councils on this contentious issue. The Chancellor's budget statement on Wednesday specifically acknowledged this and proposed